Hi, so you wanted to learn how to make a book, but because of your busy schedule, I don't think you're actually going to have time before I leave to sit down with me and learn sort of how to do it. So here are the supplies you're going to need to make a sewn um, book. It's a pamphlet stitch. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do today, okay? So you're going to need paper, of course, needles, and thread. Um, Bookbinders, however, use specific sorts of things. So there are actual bookbinding needles. These are not them because all of my bookbinding supplies I sent home. So we're making do with stuff left over from the jellyfish program. Um, there is also, to make things easier for bookbinding, they use waxed thread or they take a clump of beeswax and thread it, like rub it against the thread because it doesn't, there's too much friction when you sew it. So we're going to see how this goes with normal thread. Um, so take your paper and fold it in half however it is that you're going to fold it, but fold it each piece individually because otherwise they're going to, due to the weight and the amount that you have, it's just going to look weird and they're not going to be even. So do it individually. Most of the time I would use a bone knife for this, but my bone knife is in a box on its way back to Indiana, or actually in Indiana. So I folded pages before I filmed, yay! So what you're going to do is put them all together, like so. I just essentially grabbed a bunch of random raw pieces of paper. Do -do -do. And scrap paper because this was a to do list. Um, I'm going to really quickly show you some books that I've made using the pamphlet stitch so you can get an idea of sort of what we're going for here. So, this is a pamphlet stitch. Um, and you can sort of see it's uneven. This is okay. This is what it looks like on the inside. Um, this is another one. Looks like this. You can have fun with it. So, you can do something like this, but it's still a pamphlet stitch, if you can sort of tell. Okay. So, what you need to do is you're going to punch holes. It needs to be an odd amount of holes, okay? So we're going to figure out how to do that with an out, without an awl. Um, usually what you would do is you would like take a piece of cardboard or a heavier piece of paper, fold it in half, and hope that it flattens properly. Okay, now you're going to stick that in the center of your paper. Ignore my to-do list. And then you have to punch through all the layers. Yes, and it needs to be an odd amount. Um, preferably you want it to be bigger, you want it to be the size of the actual paper. So if this was my piece of paper, you would go over like about that much. And then another one at the center and another one here. Or you could do five, that works as well. It depends on how many stitches you want to do. So I'm going to try and stab through this and not hurt myself. Oh hey, it worked, yay. Okay. So I don't know if it's gonna show you this, ah, it did. So these three holes are going to be in which I'm going to stitch. So I'm going to line it up with the paper on the crease and stab through using this as my guide all the pages. It's going to take a bit. Sorry, I just got a message. And it's Allie, I'm waiting on her. So anyway. Going to punch through all this. Oh, hey, it worked. Yay! Don't stab yourself. Just please don't. Cool. So, as you can see, I managed to, using that as my guide, go through all of it. Yay! Okay. Then you're going to go through the middle. Now, if you want the knot to be you have to decide whether you want the knot to be on the inside 
on the outside. Because that's where the edge of your thread is going to be. I want it to be on the inside because that way you're not going to see it. So I'm going to go in from the inside, okay? So take your needle, go through the hole. Oh, but don't, don't actually sew this in unless you... This would actually make a cool little note thing. You could write little notes and they can open it up. But this is just for you, so we're not going to do that. And I'm probably going to throw this away afterwards or take it off. So go through. And it's just like normal boring sewing. Go in through another hole. Make sure you go through all of them. The more pages that you have, the harder this might be. Sometimes I have to, on a bigger piece of work, have to go through several pages at a slower pace. So like one section, go through that, hold the other part apart and go through that piece and etc. And then I'm going to go through the other end, go all the way to the back, back. Um, if you have a cover, which I'm assuming you're going to have a cover, um, you're also going to be going through that unless you want to glue that, but that's an entirely different monster. And I don't know if you want me to teach you that. So go through, go through the center next. Um, it really doesn't matter which end you start on, like you could go from the center to the back, center to the front. You just need to have an odd amount going. Go through the center. Go, go. I think I'm making a new hole. Go make a new hole, that's bad. Just go through. Also, um, make sure that you're, like, especially if you're doing more than three, like if you're doing five or seven, make sure that you don't pierce through the thread as you go through because you're going to go through the same holes. And if you pierce through the thread, it's going to not tighten. So as you go, you need to be tightening it. I don't want to waste thread, so I'm being lazy and not cutting it off the thread. Now, I just stabbed myself with a needle. Okay, so this is what it looks like. If I can do this. So. Looks like that. And then on this side, it looks like that. So I'm going to go around this. So I will stick it through. And then I'm going to knot it a couple times, okay? Knotting. Make sure it's tight. You don't want it to fall apart. Knot it a couple times around that other string. Um, and that will hold it in place. And then guess what? You're done. So just cut off the thread and it will be beautiful because you're making this as a gift and they will see all of your hard work and love you all the more for it. Um, I knot it about usually twice. It's however much you feel comfortable with. This is a thinner thread. I don't know how it's going to react, so we're just going to see. Uh, I need scissors. There are scissors. Make sure you have scissors. They're important. So. That's what it looks like. Ignore my to-do list again. Should have not put that in the center. So that's your basic pamphlet stitch. Um, if you want to do something like this with a clasp, what you're going to do, it's really simple. Um, I'm going to, sorry, it takes a while to untie it. Um, also, as you can see, this is the thread that is waxed. It comes pre-waxed and it's thicker, which makes it more of a pain to work with. But surprisingly, this works pretty well. Um, but I don't know how big your project's going to be, so you may need thicker thread. Um, and if that case, you'll need better needles and you'll just have to wing it. Um, but you can do it. So, on the inside, what I did was I just made a little knot here, tied it through, and this is what it looks like over here. And I took a pen, put it here. See? So, um, how I did that was when I folded it, I made the outside, so the cover, longer on one side um, than on the other, so that I could fold it in. So it'd be like, do do do. Oof. And then it come over so that one side comes like this. 
Let me see if I can find some paper to show you this better. Maybe. I have just to-do lists. This is not very helpful. Oh, what are you? Are you? I need you. Okay. What do I not need? Aha! I don't need all of these. So, I'll fold this little guy in half. So we have, say this is our book. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I made a weird face. Forgive me. So say this is this is the book. Uh, that's a not even book. And the, this blue, once again my to-do list, um, is your cover. So instead of it being like this, I would have had it like this and folded it this way. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if that makes sense. Um, oh, okay. So if I had folded it the other way, this would have worked. So, yeah, we're going to do that real quick. It's okay. I'm not even sure if you can hear this. We'll see. Okay, so you see this little extra flap? You would give it a lot more extra flap. And then you'd fold it over, and you'd pin it, and you'd put the pin here, and you'd put the string over here further away from this, and twist, and you're good. Um, it's another thing that you would want to hard crease. Um, if I had a bone knife, it would be perfect, but I don't have a bone knife on me. So, um, I'm going to send this to you. Let me know if you have any questions. I am primary on Friday, so I can show you because Brandy and I are making jellyfish in the RAR and drinking bubble tea. Ah, uh, this one's my favorite. It's super cute, super cute. Okay. Um, yeah. There are other types of books. Um, there's the Japanese stab binding, um, which is also sort of similar, but it's a lot more stitching. Um, and it can get frustrating. And then there's like hardbound, so you would take... Not that white piece. Um, something thicker, like cardboard, um, and cover it with a colorful... Like, it's a fabric cloth, but it's not. It's a nice um, fabric... Nice piece of paper. It's not fabric. And you would go over it, you would glue it on the four sides. And then you could either make it a book book. So it'd be sort of like this, but with actually more of a spine. Um, I don't think you have time for that. If you do, I can try and show you how to do that, but once again, all of my bookbinding supplies have been sent home. But I could possibly find you um, something on how to do it. So, yeah. Okay. Good luck. Um, please show me how your project turns out. I hope it goes well. Good luck.